Well, as a bloody stupid thing to say, wasn't it? Just in case you don't know what I'm on about, in my last video I said that Final Fantasy X was the only JRPG I'll ever like, which is half true. What I meant to say was that Final Fantasy X was the only turn-based JRPG I'll ever like. I have played other JRPGs in the past, and one of them is the Kingdom Hearts series. This comes after being asked if like the Kingdom Hearts games, and all of a sudden my mind went back to when I got a first PS2 and rented a game where you play as a brass shoe, whose hair looks like he tried having sex with an electrical outlet and went through Mickey Mouse's wardrobe. So consider this quick review on Kingdom Hearts and the style of their punctuation as an act of penance. Kingdom Hearts is a Squaresoft game for the PS2 before they married Enix and can be described as the biggest fanfiction crossover since Doctor Who meets EastEnders. One can assume that one of the Square's employees was secretly writing a slash fic between Yuffie and the clock from Beauty and the Beast, when their lead game designer asked him what it was doing. So he had to come up with some whacked out reason and thus Kingdom Hearts was born. So in one corner we have some wide-eyed, eastern, spiky haired gender questionable men, and in the other corner we have some old, western, anthropomorphic, oh would you stop murdering our parents just for fun cartoons. Seriously, this sounds like someone's crazy fanfiction that the fanfic critic would probably trample over with high heels. So the game starts off like any given YouTube AMV. Anime bullshit mixed with incredibly upbeat music that fits into the game as much as a goth appearing in Sesame Street. Why is he falling through water? Why is he suddenly on an island with a tidal wave? Why is he looking at himself falling through the sky hoping he cries his head on a fucking rock? I guess this would make sense if I was a dedicated player of JRPGs, but I'm about as far removed from major JRPGs as a common nerd is to relationships with female company. Eventually the game does start by giving us control of the main character, Sora, making us choose between a sword, a shield, and a wand. If you have any sort of common sense, you pick the sword, you fucking idiot. I mean, who the hell attacks his enemies with a shield, honestly? Afterwards, we're given the same choices again, so I'll go for the shield to go with my sword the way it's meant to be. But that's actually a mistake. You see, the first choice is what you want leveling up the most, and the second is what you want leveling up the least, leaving what you didn't choose to be the average middle man between a steroid abusing junkie and a self harming prick. After a lengthy tutorial on more morality questions, we eventually find our first boss, who happens to be your shadow. But before I can say that Zelda did it twice before, your shadow suddenly grows 50 feet. Don't feel threatened though, just keep mashing your tag button like you got a grudge against potatoes, and it'll eventually collapse under its own weight. We then wake up on an island with a jailbait girl and the ever popular gender confused male, whose name is Riku. Not the same Riku from Final Fantasy X. She has two Ks in her name, and he only has one, just like our chromosomes. But before we can settle into your Disney-ish normality, the island's attacked by shadowy creatures, whereupon we're given our main weapon, which turns out to be a bloody key. What am I meant to do with this, Square? Am I meant to open their heads and find out where they keep their secret pawn stash, or am I meant to beat them over the head with a spiky end? Oh, yes, apparently. The island then gets sucked into a Final Fantasy-ish black hole, and we're sent into another world where we meet that bro that fans will start complaining about, but more importantly, your team members. Namely, Donald, who's now a mage with a zipper fetish, and Goofy, who attacks enemies with a shield. Well, I'll be damned. Now's a good time to bring up the combat system. There's no flashy transition where you assume that a battle is taking place in someone's imagination, nor do the combatants stand at either side of the room taking turns to kick each other in the shins. Instead, when enemies appear, you beat them to death by repeatedly selecting the attack option on the battle menu, and this is where my big pulsating nitpick of the combat appears. You see, to navigate the manga, you use a D-pad, which doesn't flow well in battle. You could be running away from your pursuer on lower health, desperately needing to use a potion. So you start running, highlight items, select the potion, that character, oh, too late, your pursuer caught up with you and now has killed you and ripped your heart out. There is a way around it with a quick select function where you can equip certain items or spells, but there is a third way, use the right analogue stick. Speaking of someone who's played a lot of 3D platform, the right stick is meant for the camera, you cunt waffle. Instead, the camera is mounted on L2 and R2 buttons, meaning you can't look up or down. What am I meant to do once I drop down to a lower ledge, reenact the last crusade? Moving on to a later part of the game, you can travel in an old 3D shooter section between each and Disney themed worlds in a, wait for it, a gummy ship. One can assume, again, that they either stole it from a gummy bear's homeworld, or they purposely built out of gummies so when it eventually crashes, the survivors have something to snack on before rescue. The option is there to create your own ship with the gummies you collected on your travels, so it does seem kind of pointless when you collect blueprints with pre-made designs, thus rendering a completely pointless gimmick rather useless. Not unless you want to fly around in the cockpit of a cockship, or the star breast enterprise. Speaking of visuals, I will say that each of the Disney themed worlds you visit have been faithfully recreated in 3D and make you the most critical animated movie review a leap up and hump the screen. And the variety of enemies is actually quite staggering despite many of them being pretty much the same ones attacked by different fashion trends. To bring this long winded review to an end, I have to say that I really enjoyed Kingdom Hearts. It's charming, nostalgic, and aside from the controls, camera, and chicken which you're wearing the best equipment, it's one of the few original crossover ideas that doesn't get balled down to a fighting or party game. I guess my biggest complaint is that Square has took two steps forward and several steps back with prequels and interquels. Just stop beating around a bush and make Kinemats free already! <laughs> <laughs>